Hello, hello! It's a lovely day, super sunny, the birds are chirping, plants are growing, and you can still see leaves from the fall. What season is it? Who cares? Uh, I had an idea to show some tips and techniques for how certain elements were made inside of some of my projects. Uh, not using the original files, but using pieces of them. And on this video, there's a bunch of different tools, but here I wanted to talk about how I did these balloons. So, it's a surprisingly interesting and simple technique that could be applied in other ways. And I'm going to go through how I did it, and then we're going to do like a test scene, and then I'll hopefully have some other examples to show. Um, but pretty much what I'm doing is emitting particles. The balloons are particles using particular, uh, trap code, particular. And then they are spawning these baby balloon whatever's particles for the string. So it's all one system. There's like nothing else to it. It's very, very basic. <clears throat> but the effect works pretty darn well, and I thought it'd be interesting because I haven't really seen people trying to do, you know, animating a string would be very difficult with the follow through motion and stuff that happens. Um, animating a balloon is hard enough, but just like getting this pop out where balloons are coming out and then there's other things, that's what I'm going to work on today. Let's take a look at the actual file, or at least the effects of this file, and we can see what's going on here. Uh, I did fool myself, because this is not just one particle system, this is a collection of particle systems. So this is the effect that we're going to be recreating today, which is this uh, soft flutter of balloons. So. This is one particle system, and then the strings are little auxiliary particle systems coming out of those particles. But actually, the initial burst is a totally separate particle system that was keyframed, and then the strings were emitted from those keyframes with like linking a light, I believe, to each of the strings or something like that, something messy, but that, that's how that worked. So, uh, I was wrong. I fooled myself. So that means that this works. This technique works. And we're just gonna get on, jump into it, and uh, you'll see how this goes. I'm gonna also show some uh, little samples of other things I've made. They should be up on the screen right now. We're just going to aim for 1920 by 1080 like a real professional would. We're going to make it 10 seconds long, and that should be good. All right, so we don't really need to do anything other than do new solid. And I like to do <coughs> my effects, pardon me, on black. Make comp size so it fills up the full frame. I will call this VFX black and I will particular come to trap code put on particular and we will see what's going on we're gonna go for a very very similar effect we're going to have particles come on and then particles go off so it's just a little a burst of them and I will Trim my comp, move my drink out of the way. <coughs> All right, so we have we have nothing beautiful yet, but that's okay. We need to we want to have the burst, so I'm gonna add some more velocity here, and I'm just gonna like multiply it times five. All right. Uh, one thing that happens with this kind of stuff is that there's no air resistance ever in like default particle systems, so turning that on is good so they can explode out. And that allows you to do this much higher and actually get the speed that you want. Okay, so one thing that's bothering me is this crap is just not working. 
Okay, so I want it, it, I can't just say this crap is not working. When it's right here, the particles are like, blah, 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 blah. Like it's, do, 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 do. it's shooting for a while. I just want it to all be at once. So it's all at once, but it's the very first like frames. So I'm just moving this forward in time. Just so you have something, some sort of like anticipation, I guess you could call it. Okay, so we got that going, and yes, this is boring, and I possibly am leading, not, I'm not leading you astray by any sense, but it is very hard to see particles that small. Boom. Boom. Okay, and I am just going to do, what do I want? What am I looking for? Oh, here we go. I'm just looking for a little bit of shading. No, not shading. A shadow let. That's what I'm looking for. Bloop. Okay, great. I'm going to move the emitter down because these are balloons filled with helium. So in order to make something go up, instead of having gravity be positive, you just go, I think, negative will work. Need some negative gravity. And I don't I don't really know what these numbers are supposed to be. If there's something that's actually mathematically accurate that you could type in here to be real real world, but whatever. Uh, we want more because these are balloons. Usually I just double things and then dial it back. Double things and dial it back. Awesome, okay. So we're going to turn off the feather just so these are big, huge things, and I'm going to lower the brightness just so that they're not pure white. And hopefully we can see some of that shadow lit difference. Uh, we don't really need this stuff, so let me shrink it over. Whoa. Boom. So that is looking good. All right. So what we're going to do now, we're going to just start with the strings. Uh, we're going to do a continuous spawn. And look, if you look here, like use your imagination and connect those, uh, you might, you might start to see a little string like, oh, wow. Oh, you can see where I got this idea from. So uh, let's change the color from main. Uh, we don't want that color over life. Here we go. We'll just do a plain one. That, and now we've got strings, sort of. We want all of the balloons. If you want half the balloons to spawn strings, you can lower this, but I want 100%. And uh, I'll leave this high until it starts to kill. It It's not going to be super like a uh, fast rendering, but it's not going to be slow either. Um, okay, so this is looking good. And now we are going to turn off the feather on this because this is definitely hard. And we just want some little strings. And it, it's okay if it's dotted for now. We can go and fill that in later with more particles. Now nah, I'll do it now. I don't screw around. All right, cool. So that's looking good. But if you look at this, You'll see that there's some like waviness and noise, and that is generated by using some of the physics, like the turbulence field. And this is back on the main particle. So I'll just do 10. 10 is not that much. Now we don't want them to look like little spermies swimming, but I mean, maybe, maybe you do. I don't. Um, I want them to immediately be moving, so I want to get rid of the fade in time. And you can also see what that kind of does. The fade in time 
they will like burst out and you can see with this trail really well they'll burst out and maybe you do want that whatever you want you can do I, I don't care uh, evolution speed that's what's going way too fast on here so if I just do this again looking like spermy so let me drop this to half so it goes faster the scale is much too small so I'm gonna make it five times as big oops and this goes the other way all right and then the evolution speed uh, you might just want one piece of noise affecting it boom boom okay that looks cool now on here I think one thing that I did you can turn up the velocity and like they'll start you know they'll be like little rocket ships that are shooting off one at a time uh, and that's just them coming out of their origin point but I don't want that what I want them to do is get some control from main and inherit a little bit of velocity but not not too much because you can see that if they get too much then they'll like blah and that looks I mean you could be going for that effect you'll see that there's a lot of different things that start to look kind of cool I'm gonna say just 25 and this is where having that uh, still time right here in this area kind of kills the illusion so if you turn this to zero they'll like immediately be moving and you can you can affect a lot of this different kind of stuff oh, maybe we want to do this oh I don't know what that does Uh, you'll notice sometimes you get little kinks in it but I believe that you can come up here and do position subframe and do like you can add more subframes or you can do exact some of these will fix it but some of them won't and there's gonna be a lot of like adjusting that you do to get exactly what you want I'll just use 10 times linear for now So now we can address some other problems. And the first one being that the strings of these balloons are coming from the center, if you can see that. And that's, you know, that might be okay for some effects, but for this one, we want the balloon to you know like a real balloon come from the bottom of the balloon you know like these uh, party city balloons where they come from the bottom so what this is gonna require you to do I think actually they they updated it and made it so it was a little bit easier to do in here but I'm gonna show how I did it for wherever that video went who cares so what I did was make a subcomp and I'm going to make it, let's say 500 by 500. All right, we have this. And this is also a good little introduction on how you would how you would use different balloons inside of the system. I'll probably be a little bit rusty but that's okay okay so how this will work now we're just gonna center this to here and we're gonna call this composition balloon particles great and we're going to come into our project drop balloon particles here I'll just move it over here 
And on this little VFX black, we will tell it particle. So instead of spheres, we're going to say do a sprite and use the balloon particles. And then it's going to say your layer is big, but it's fine. It's really, really okay. This is where, yes, it will get slow. But that's okay. That's why we have computers. I'll lower this and then I'll speed it up a little bit. So one thing I want to do is try to get these to rotate with the speed. Uh, so what do we do? We go rotation, I want to say, orient to motion on. And now we just have to get it in the right angle. So now when they come out, they're all like facing out. But then eventually, since they're all going up, they're going to face the right way. Okay, that's great. Uh, but we don't want to just have A. That's stupid and boring. We want to have maybe a, a B. So we're going to duplicate our layer. Type in B. And I went forward to three seconds in time. And I trimmed the A, and it switches to B. And then I'm going to do the same here. And I turned on my stupid thing, so we're going to duplicate. There's shortcuts for this, but they're by default the same shortcuts as the screen recording software. Okay, so now we have A, B, C over time. And if we go to our comp over here, you'll see that they're A, but what we want to do is use this texture and we want it to uh, just do a random still frame and it will get a random frame from this movie clip or sequence or pre-comp or whatever you want to call it. So that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and change this for changes sake or we can turn uh, once you have this much crap going on, it can get a little bit messy, but it's never it's never anything that you can't deal with. Uh, let's change it to Sprite Colorize. That's what I'm looking for. Um, we want to just change the color of these things so they're not all the same thing. All right. Cool. So now, boom. And you can see it's it's slow but it's starting. All right, so since this, I put this in the comp, you might be like, why do you have that there? It's annoying, it's frustrating. This is a good reminder of how big you can make your sprites before you start to see aliasing on the edge or something like that, because it's rendering each one of these things as its own sprite pretty much now. Uh, so we can make these balloons the same size as this without worrying about anything and then after that point you can really like you can still go higher but you just want to be careful that you're not making stuff blurry because blurry is bad okay so we're mostly done with this and if you also want to lower this so you have fewer balloons and it'll go faster you can do that and now you might be curious why it just isn't like A, B, C. It's just because we have um, the texture at random. If you do random play once, maybe. No. Yeah. No. That's putting the texture map onto them. Oh, here, uh, the, the split clip, I believe it's called. Then you would say how many clips you have. You have three. And it, it, it'll do its best to fit it. You just have to make it perfect. So this is like 10 seconds long, and that's not 
perfect math because it doesn't divide into three very well. So you'll make this end at six and the other one start at six. Then this go to nine and now you have perfect three second comps so it's even. And in here it should be A, B, C. And they're not in order but that's okay. You can use your imagination that it is. Alright, so that solves that problem. We still have one more problem. Well, I, I solved a problem that I didn't talk about. We haven't fixed the problem of the anchor point of this thing. So what I do, and this is not the most efficient way, is to raise the height and then move these up. So they're halfway point. That's this little crosshair right here. If we just move this up to here, and we come back to our comp, you'll see that it should be coming out of the bottom. But before I do that, I want to undo this, and I want to try the thing that wasn't in the program earlier. There was a th uh, option called aspect ratio. Nope. I could have been imagining it. That's very possible. Very, very possible. Okay, so that that's one way you can do it is doubling your comp and having exactly what you did have. Or you can use everything inside of this composition and just get it to fit. If that makes sense. Um, one problem you will have is that that will shrink your balloons. And now we have another issue, whereas this A, it is spawning from not where it's safe. So I think if we just move this here, just the A, not both of them, but the B looks good, the C looks good, and that will fix your problem with the A. And if you wanted, you could make a little piece of art for the little tails like the balloons have. So I'm going to go back to this auxiliary system and I'm going to bump up the particles again. Whoops. Okay. Uh, what, what, what happened? I don't know what happened. Shit's always happening. You can see this is kind of slow, but it's kind of easier than animating sprites or trimming paths. Uh, and it's much more versatile because if you want, you know, if you want more balloons in here, we can go back to 100 again. I'm going to drop this resolution down. You can, you can do this and you, it's just procedural and it's updatable which is really good to start thinking about using in your work. And now there's there's a lot of other things that you could do uh, to clean this up, to make it look better. Like uh, if you wanted to make these objects look like they're not just popping on, that's one you could do. So we would have the particle of our main, our little balloon letters, and we want it to size over life, and just use a preset is fine. We just want it to grow, and then we want it to stay big. So just get rid of this crap. <clears throat> it's really... Not fast, but still faster than if you had to keyframe all this stuff. And there's, there's a weird thing going on with this B, because it's most noticeably going straight down. So sometimes what you'll want to do is just uh, tweak your random seed. Here we go. This one looks good because they're all out. 
if that makes sense. Cool, that looks pretty good. Uh, maybe you want to add some shading to these balloons. So we can do that with uh, some layer styles, I think would be good. Uh, the layer styles. We want to do a bevel and emboss. Let me go ahead and pull this back up to full. And we can make it nice and big. It doesn't have to be perfect or anything, but maybe we don't want it that big. We want the A to show a little bit. We can just check it over here. And since this is colorizing them, it will colorize over here. But what you can do, you can just click layer styles, you can do copy with property links, and then you can paste it on your B and paste it on your C. So B and C. Um, we could add a layer style on the A of, where did you go? Layer style, just a, a gradient overlay, which is, doesn't look good to start with, but you can tweak it pretty well to do what you need. Um, I'm going to turn off the bevel and emboss so we can just see what we're working with. Change this to radial, reverse it. No, don't reverse it. All right, so something like that. And you can offset this. You just want to make it like this a little bit. And lower that opacity. So just like a little bit of a controlled bevel. <coughs> just to show that it's round. Hey, okay. Uh, you could get rid of this dark background because it's looking really kind of gross. And these these uh, randomized colors are pretty freaking hideous as well. So maybe you want to just control everything and dial it down. Like you don't want to have it be that bright. Or whatever you want. You, you can do a lot of different things automatically. You can come up here and do 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 our color over life in random. We can keep it more more controlled. It's kind of hard to try to keep it controlled though because you don't get these bright colors unless you go nuts with it but I guess what we could do is come into here and we're, we're just working on the A if you remember it's hard to see with the layer styles but maybe if we do a fill I want to see if these effects yeah these effects will stack on top of whatever you have so we want a red balloon I made a keyframe we want a blue balloon we don't want it that bright though. More blue. Uh, we'll change all these to old keyframes. And we'll make another one that is yellow. Let's make a nice yellow, not, not a crappy yellow. A little bit warmer is a nice yellow in my opinion. Alright, so if we come here it will be sourcing, at least for the A, just focus on the A, and we turn off the color random. Oh, and we turn off our tint. Did we add a tint? No, we didn't. I might have just turned off color altogether on it. Whoops. Whoops. Um, wh 
Whoops. Well, this isn't the best way to do it, I guess. <laughs> but, uh... Is not the worst way to do it. I don't know if you can make these stronger. You can, but this this is okay. So that that didn't do exactly what I wanted. Oh wait 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 whoa, 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 whoa. I'm trying to trying to think here. You should be able to use the colors from this. Okay, I think it's because I have Sprite colorized. Let me turn it back to Sprite. It'll render. And it will have... Instead of 3, I'm going to multiply this by 9, or by 3 and get 9, and then you'll get your other colors in here. The only problem with that is that it's drawing the strings that way too. Which isn't exactly what we want, but maybe you do want that. I don't know. But really, actually, let me think. There's always there's always something to think about here. You could specify on your auxiliary that you want color from main to be... Hmm... Oh, here we go. It was actually, this is probably what was taking us so along, is because it was drawing the letters for the particle. That was stupid. Okay, so we're back to sphere. Let me put this back to full res. Alright, and we can just do... I'm losing my stuff here, I apologize. When you close these, they get a little bit junky. So if you did color from main, you would get some different stuff, but I don't want that. We'll just do color over life and do this little white trick again. Okay, so... On this version, you can see that the letters are just disappearing, and that is most likely because they just don't last that long. So the life will make... Nope, that's not why.
And then there's there's going to be some finessing and you can keyframe stuff. Uh, the problem right here is that since we made these last live longer, we're kind of losing our... our growth curve. We want them to like not pop pop on quite like that but pretty much like that oh we got a little a little straggler i think there's some stragglers that happen in my original video And maybe the A doesn't look like the best letter or whatever, but that's where you can come in here and grab this. And maybe you want this to be a Z, or is there a lowercase a? No, they're all the same. A Q, a P, an O, that might be a good balloon shape. Oh, and then we need to move, not move, just readjust our origin point. And you can come in here and turn off your visualize fields because you don't want those stupid bastards rendering. And that's pretty much how I did it. And again, the coolest thing about this is you can just make it as many or as few as you want. Or if you were trying to hand animate this, or someone said, could we have 50% more balloons or double the balloons or something like that, a producer, a director, or a client, here it's, it's like, you know, it's pretty much done already for you. All you gotta do is wait for the renders, which you're already waiting for anyway. Come on, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Uh... The depth of the strings is, for the most part, accurate. It's not the most accurate. You'll see some issues sometimes, but it's not to the point where you will be, like, you know, disgusted by what it looks like. You will see some areas like right here. This, like, popping and going in front. And in order to fix that, really what you can do is you can change the seed or whatever you would like to try, but you just have to play through it. And usually if you add a little bit more Z depth, <clears throat> so have them emit from a sphere or a box and like extrude it out in that direction, it will help allow the particles to have space to move so they don't occlude like really harshly like that. Just like this one looks like it. I didn't see any snapping on the pre-render, but we will see if there is any. There's a little bit, but... There will almost always be some of that. So, uh, that's my way to do it. I'm going to break my tradition of not giving files and I'm going to save out a version of this file and a link to the font so you can download the font and then open this otherwise it's not going to exactly work because it's going to say we don't have the fucking font or whatever um, and then you can take this apart modify it use it wherever you want I guess maybe give credit to someone I don't know you don't have to <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm trying to create more tutorials, and if I have something specific, it's much easier to sit down and actually create it. So if you have requests, 
just let me know. Uh, maybe you have a problem that you've been trying to solve for a while, or you're curious how someone made something. I'm really interested in pursuing some like deconstructions and recreations uh, of my own work and other people's work, as long as it's not too super complicated. A lot of the times it's just little pieces, like this is one little piece to that animation where there was other things happening, there was 3D text, there was uh, a confetti particle system, maybe I'll go over that next. Uh, There's a lens flare, I believe. There was an animated background, but like they were all going together to create this <coughs> explosion of fun and happiness. Uh, so... This is my take on this. It's not perfect, but it's it's a good start. There's like no balloon to balloon collisions and like bouncing like what I really really want to happen, but it's a good start. It'll get you pretty far into what you're trying to create, I think. If you're trying to make balloons in After Effects with particular and less time. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Bye. Okay, I, uh, so I'm coming back after the fact and I'm showing some samples. Uh, this is the revised with better colors. It looks much better, much happier. This is what I use in the title card and this will be in the file. And here are these little tadpole spermy things. So that'll be in the file. These are both like exact same process. Uh, here's another one. You can make some little rockets with smoke and whatever. That's just one particle system. This one I thought was really interesting where, uh, it's like bullets shooting into water where the bullet slowly slows down and then the bubbles go up. So that's included in the file. There's some wicked banding going on probably, but that's all right. You can fix it better. Uh, and then this one is not so much the same, but it's introducing the bounce properties of the snowballs when they hit the snow on the ground. Which is similar, but different. So, uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this and you have other ideas, I have other tutorials and I'm totally up for making some custom specific tutorials. I think I mentioned that before. Uh, so look around my YouTube. It's growing slowly. But it will be good content, and I appreciate your viewing time. Have a good day.